The next thing I want to tackle regarding navigation is a pretty common use case, and that is displaying content in a pop-up better known as a modal. So one thing I want to do in our demo is we have this login page. I'd like to put this inside of a modal. So we get this pop-up to log in, and then you click log in, and it closes the modal and maybe takes you to the account page or something like that. So that's what I want to put in the modal, but we need a modal on our UI first. And I'm not going to dedicate any of this tutorial to doing any of that UI. I want to focus on the navigation part of it. So instead, I actually have another video where I do a UI workshop and I create a custom modal control and I publish that as a NuGet package. So if I go to manage NuGet packages for my project and I search for simple modal dot WPF, we have this package by Singleton Sean, a custom easy to use modal control. That is exactly what we want. That is what we're going to display our content inside of. So I encourage you to watch that UI workshop if you're interested in how this works, but we're going to go over it here, of course. So let's go into my main window. This is the root of the application and we're going to put our modal in here. And right now, all we have is this content control in here. So we're going to have to surround this with a grid so that we can put multiple elements in here. So a grid and the other element we want in here is our modal. So I can put modal in here and we should be able to import that so a control dot get our namespace and i'll just rename this to custom and this is a modal so i want it to be above my content so i'm going to set a z index on this so panel dot z index will do 100 we want it to be all the way at the top and then we can simply open this up and put some content inside of here so i want my login view in here by default and this is just to show off how the modal works we're going to dynamically adjust this content as we go and I also have to set is open to true. And there we go. Here's our modal. Looks pretty smooth. We got our login content inside of there. Now we just need to integrate this with our navigation so that when I click this login button up here, we bring this up. And also when I click login, I'm going to want to close this modal as well. So similar to how we have this navigation store that manages the current view model for the application, which ultimately displays what view we are on, we're going to have another store here for the modal navigation. So I'll call this the modal navigation store and everything we put inside of the modal navigation store, you could actually put inside of the navigation store and kind of combine your modal navigation and your regular page navigation. But I like to keep them separated, single responsibility principle, can't forget about that. So my modal navigation store is also gonna have a current view model. So I'm actually just gonna copy all of this and actually we can copy everything inside of this class because we're going to use all of this, but just make some additions inside of this class. So make sure we import everything here. So first off, how are we going to determine if the modal is open? Well, if the current view model inside of this modal navigation store is null, that means the modal should be closed because there's no content to display. So for our is open property, that'll be a calculated property that is just based on if current view model does not equal null. So if the current view model does equal null, that means our modal should not be open. So to close the modal, we have to set this property to null. So I'm going to encapsulate that logic into a close method. And all we do in here is set current view model to null. So now the current view model to display inside of our modal is inside this store, which means in our main window, we're going to want to access the properties on our modal navigation store. So the data context for our main window is the main view model, which means we also want our modal navigation store inside of this view model as well. So we got a field for that. Let's add that to the constructor. And we want to expose the view model that we should display in the modal on our view. So we'll have a property for that, the modal or the current modal view model that works. And we get that from our modal navigation store, current view model. And since this is a property, and it's a property that's going to change throughout our application. We also need to subscribe to modal navigation store current view model changed so that we can raise a property change for this property and our UI will update. So we'll call this on current modal view model changed and we'll simply raise on property changed for the current modal view model. So now in our main window, let's bind to this property. So to do that, we're going to have a content control very similar to this one. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in there. And we want all of our data template mappings inside of this content control as well. So that when we display 
the login view model, we get the login view, or when we display any view model, we get the corresponding view, but we are duplicating all of these data templates and these resources, and that is a problem, but no big deal. We can simply move those up to this grid and define them in the grid resources, and these data templates will propagate down to our nested content controls down here. So we can just cut out the data templates, move them to the grid, and simplify our content controls. And this should be a binding to the current modal view model. And we also want to bind this is open dependency property on our modal because right now it's open all the time. That's not what we want. So we want a binding to some kind of is open property so that we can toggle whether or not the modal should be open. So to implement that on the main view model, which we're going to bind to, all we have to do is point an is open property on the main view model to the modal navigation stores is open property. So just delegating all of this logic to the modal navigation store. And whenever the current modal view model changes, we also want to raise an on property changed for is open because it could have been set to null, which means that the modal should be closed. So this is pretty good infrastructure we got here. Now we just need to use this modal navigation store throughout our application to navigate around throughout the modal. So let's review what we want to do with this modal. We want our login button on the navigation bar to pop up the modal with the login page content. So the command for that login button on the navigation bar is here in my navigation bar view model, and it's the navigate login command. And currently, we instantiate that as a navigate command. And all this navigate command does is call navigate on the navigation service. So ideally, all I'd want to do here is implement some kind of I navigation service that will navigate by popping up a modal. So let's go ahead and create that service. So here in my services, I will add a new item, the modal navigation service, and this will be an I navigation service. And before I go any further with this, I'm actually having a second thought here. So if I look at my I navigation service, this is generic for a TV model, but then nowhere in this interface do we even use this TV model requirement. So do we really need this to be generic? And no, we do not. The only reason I wanted the generic was because it would have been easier to register these dependencies in dependency injection, but it's still not required and there's other ways we can resolve that issue when we get to it. So we are gonna remove it. This is no longer gonna be generic, which means pretty much everywhere in our application needs to update to remove that generic. So the layout navigation service, the regular navigation service, and the navigate command. And now even the navigate command no longer needs to be generic as well, because all it does is navigate with the non-generic navigation service. And now I believe the login command also needs to be updated. Same with the navigation bar view model and pretty much all of our view models to so the login view model, just the constructors since we pass those into our commands, the home view model, there we go, and the account view model. So pretty drastic change, but it is for the better. And lastly, in our app.xaml.cs, we also need to update it here, and this should be the final place. And update all these factory functions down here. And while we're here, we should also get our modal navigation store set up, since we have to pass that to our main view model. So just instantiate that in the constructor, and finally pass it to the main view model. All right, so finally back in our modal navigation service, let's implement our I navigation service. And since we're navigating through our modal, we're gonna need our modal navigation store. And similar to our other navigation services, we're gonna need some kind of factory function to create the view model that we wanna to navigate to. So just a func that gives us back some kind of T view model. So this is gonna be a generic navigation service similar to our other ones with a constraint where the T view model needs to be a view model base. And we call this factory function create view model because that's exactly what it does. It's going to create some kind of view model for us that we want to navigate to. So let's generate that constructor. And now when we navigate, we will set the navigation store, which is our modal navigation store. We'll set the current view model to the view model that we'll create with this callback function. So I think we're actually ready to use this. So all we have to do is pass in a modal navigation service to this navigation bar view model. So if we go to that, we want our login navigation service to be a modal navigation service. So let's go here and just change this to a modal navigation service. And actually these constructors are almost the same except this takes our modal navigation store. And here we go, let's click login. 
and very nice i am liking that now if we log in so i'll just throw some garbage in here doesn't really close the mode one that's not okay we want this to close and not only do we want it to close we also want it to navigate to our account page on the regular navigation store so we want to do two things here let's start with just closing the modal i think that's most important because right now we're just stuck here and i know we already have a ton of navigation services but you might end up with a lot of these because they are useful they control your navigation so next up we're going to have a close modal navigation service so implement i navigation service and we're dealing with modals here so we're going to get our modal navigation store import that generate a constructor and what do we think the close modal navigation service is going to do well it's going to take the modal navigation store and call close so ultimately our modal is going to get closed which is exactly what we want whenever we click that login button so currently in our login command after we press that login button it takes a navigation service and navigates us and right now that navigation service is passed to our login view model constructor and what we pass into that is an account navigation service so whenever we press login it navigates us to the account page but right now we actually just want to close the middle that's our first step eventually we're also going to navigate to the account page so we're going to have like two operations going on but right now i just want to close the middle so for now just pass in a new close modal navigation service and pass in our modal navigation store so now i go to log in throw some stuff in here press log in and there we go modal closed and we actually are logged in so all we have to do now is re-navigate us to the account page not for any particular reason just to show it off and just because that is the logic we had before and it might be pretty common to close a modal and then navigate somewhere else so definitely want to show that off so back in our services rather than creating some kind of service that's like close modal and navigate to the account page navigation service we're not going to do that because you could just end up having a bajillion navigation services and we don't want too many of them so what i'm going to do is create just a general composite navigation service so this is based on the composite design pattern and we're going to implement i navigation service because that is what's required throughout our application and the way the composite design pattern works is inside of here we're going to have multiple navigation services defined so we're going to have a collection of navigation services so we can just have an i enumerable of i navigation services and that can come through the constructor and now when we navigate all we're going to do is iterate over all of these navigation services and call navigate on each of them so just a simple for each and for each navigation service we will navigate and the real benefit of the composite design pattern in this case is that clients for example the login command doesn't need to know that it's dealing with multiple navigation services all it's going to do is call navigate which is going to trigger all of our navigation services that we pass into this composite so this login command is always going to work and never going to have to change regardless of how many navigation operations we want to do so we could pass in a singular navigation service or we can pass in the composite and do multiple things like close the modal and navigate to a different page which is exactly what we want to do so back in our app.xaml.cs rather than just passing in this closed modal navigation service we are going to have a composite navigation service and this is all getting way too nested and long so i'm actually going to put this composite outside here and pass that in and now all we have to do is define all the navigation operations we want to do inside of this composite so this takes an i enumerable i'm feeling a little bit fancy so what i'm going to do instead is just pass in my close modal navigation service and then i think what we had before was just this account navigation service that we create down here from this function so we can just call that function get our account navigation service and to support just passing all of these in like this in multiple parameters what i can do is just make this params which means it also has to be just a regular array and there we go back in the app.xaml.cs that is all good forgot to pass in my modal navigation store and now finally let's do this so log in brings up the modal put some stuff in log in and there we go we close the modal and re-navigate all thanks to the wonderful composite design pattern so that is modal navigation lets us show pop-ups with important content all we did was create a modal navigation store to manage 
whatever view model should be displayed inside of the modal. I also set up my custom modal control. I'll leave a link to the tutorial where I actually create the custom control because that's always fun. But if you don't care, that's okay. It's pretty straightforward to use. And then lastly, we created our modal navigation service so that we could show different content inside of our modal. And then we created this composite navigation service so that we could do multiple navigation operations at once such as closing a modal and navigating to a different page. So hopefully you can use this in your own applications. I know this has been requested quite a lot, so I'm pretty excited to be able to show off how to implement this. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.